The following five tips I'm about to show you took my games from this to this. Here are five tips and tricks that should be banned. And if you stay to the end, I'll even show you an extra trick to instantly crash any game. This is Bob the Blob, and he's going to help explain all the concepts you need to know. The first trick I want to show you is how to access the scroll wheel so that you can make scrolling sidebars like this. When it comes to key inputs in Scratch, you can do it in two ways, which is rather strange because you'd only really need one. But this allows us to do something rather sneaky. You see, this block triggers not only when you press the up key, but also when you scroll the mouse up. The other block only triggers when the up arrow key is pressed, meaning we can isolate the scroll wheel on the mouse. The same can be done for the downwards motion on the mouse using when down arrow key pressed. And if we combine these with some movement code, we can bob bob the blob. There's also a hidden key that you have access to, and that's the enter key. Whilst it doesn't appear on the list of possible keys that can be sensed, we can combine these blocks in a clever way. Unfortunately, this only works for the enter key and not the control, shift or caps lock keys, but it's still a clever little trick. Have you ever wondered how people make awesome thumbnails? And even how they animate them when you press the stop button? This is actually a really simple trick that now you can do. Firstly, you need a thumbnail as a sprite, which I've got here. I'm not actually sure what's going on here, but it looks cool. Then, in the thumbnail sprite, we apply this code, which gives it a ghost effect. This means that when you press the stop button, anything that has the ghost effect applied to it becomes fully visible, making the thumbnail appear. You also have to make sure that it's forever going to the front layer, so it appears in front of anything that otherwise might block it. If you save the project with your thumbnail appearing, it will be the face of the project before you even play the game. To animate the thumbnail and make it look even better, we use the timer. Here, when the project's running, the timer will always be set to zero, but when the stop button is pressed, the timer can no longer be set to zero as the project isn't running. This means that it triggers the thumbnail to do some sort of animation whether it be fading in, sliding in, or any other ideas you have. This brings us on to tip number three, which is making your sprites go fully off screen. Have you ever noticed that when you move a character as far right or left as you can, there's still a bit of him showing? So how do we make things fully disappear so that they can come on screen out of nowhere? Well, we first set the size to 500 before moving him so that the system thinks he's massive and puts him further off screen. Then we set the size to 100 so that he looks normal to our eye. Because the code runs so quickly, Bob moves and looks completely normal. But let's be real, Bob never looked right to begin with. I love making action games. And a key feature of any action game is an FPS counter or a frames per second counter. And you can implement this yourself with Scratch. First, you create a variable that can be either for this sprite or all sprites and name it FPS. Then we want to use the timer again and create this function where we're setting the FPS to round one divided by timer. Scratch typically runs at 30 frames a second. Oh, that's not right. Scratch typically runs at 30 frames a second, but as you can see, by adding in lots of code and slowing this down, it accurately depicts the actual frames per second. Tip number five is making things move in a smooth motion. I know you've seen games where characters glide across the screen or text moves up and down, and you've been very impressed. You see, behind all this motion is a mathematical formula that I'm about to show you. We're going to begin by acting on the Y axis. So I've set up a forever loop here. Grab yourself a plus, and then we're gonna grab ourselves a times. These are all in the operating category. Then we're gonna grab ourselves this little abs block and change it to sign. From here, we're going to grab ourselves another times block and place it in that sign. And we're going to start by setting some of our values. Then we're going to add in timer. And I will show you what these values do in just a second. But here's some default ones I put in of 530. At this point, you should see Bob oscillating up and down like a spring consistently. If we go back to the code, we can change how fast he bobs by altering this value. 
how far up and down he bobs by this value, and where he starts bobbing by this value. This whole formula can also be applied to a character's direction, size, and other aspects. Let's be real, you've just been waiting to hear the final tip, how to crash any game with a click of a button. As you've noticed, the quality of editing has drastically gone down as I need to get this video out, so this will only take 30 seconds. And also please like and subscribe. I'm going to make the system crash when the character is clicked. In this case, we're going to use if mouse down, create a clone of myself. Then, the most important part, when he starts as a clone, he needs to do these things. Create a clone of himself and delete this clone. This cycle means that the program is overloaded with clones, causing it to crash. Now get out there and make your own games. And if there's any other ideas you have of things you'd like to see or learn, write it down in the comments. But don't be silly, or I'll unleash Bob from his shackles.